Hi, I'm Dr. Alex Russell from the Experimental Gambling Research Lab at CQ University Australia. In this video, I'm going to talk about email triggers in Qualtrics. These are a way to send emails either to yourself or to the survey respondent, perhaps when they've finished the survey. Let's get into it. So here I've set up an example of when you might use an email trigger. So I'm going to use a survey here for people to sign up to a conference and uh, submit an abstract. So I've got a very simple survey. You, of course, might make this look a bit prettier for your conference. Uh, but, you know, thanks for your interest in the conference in 2021. Hopefully conferences are back soon. Um, please use this form to submit an abstract. So I've got some questions here about what is their first name, surname, which uni do you come from? And I'm putting these into separate uh, sections so that I can easily split them out later, say for doing things like name tags and that. Uh, then I get people to enter their email address and to confirm their email address and see my separate video on capturing contact information and how to verify um, email addresses. Uh, and then I've got a question here that allows them to enter their abstract and I've set this up as a essay text box. So it looks small here, but it will allow them to enter a lot. Uh, so that's my basic survey and what I want to do when people have actually signed up for my conference is I want to get an email so that I can see them rolling in um, and just get a feel for how things are going. So every time someone submits an abstract, I would like to get an email. To do this, I go into t uh, tools and triggers and email triggers here and you get to this box. So this is where you can set up an email trigger. Now at the moment, I'll talk about conditions at the top in a second, uh, but I want to just set up one for when they complete the survey. So that means they've done the last question, which is submitting the abstract itself. I want to send an email to myself, but you could send an email to anyone you like. You could set, you know, set up a special conference email address and send it there. Um, you can set up details here about who it's coming from, and I'll talk about uh, email sending settings um, in a little bit. Um, and then the subject. So the subject is just the name of the survey here. It's called email trigger example. So I might change that to someone has signed up for your conference. Okay. The text of the email, we can also use the information of the survey in here. So you can say, you know, um, good news. Ugh. Someone has signed up uh, to present at your conference. Um, here are their details. So you can say name and surname and email address uh, and even uni in there as well because we captured that um, and then abstract text. All right, now at the moment, this is just text in an email, but we can use pipe text to actually put their responses in. So here's the pipe text button, this A surrounded by the curly brackets, uh, insert pipe text. And I've got the cursor next to name here. So I'll insert pipe text from a survey question. What is your first name? And then whatever they've answered, answered for what is your first name? Uh, and that text entry value, whatever they entered for first name will now come through here. Here's one for surname um, and so on. So you can set all of these up, uh, uni. So survey question, which uni do you come from? Uh, email address and I've got email address in there twice the first time they do it and then when they confirm it I just need to put one of those it, because they should be the same it doesn't actually really matter uh, and then the abstract down here into please enter your abstract so not only am I, am I getting an email telling me that someone signed up for the conference but I'm also getting all of the details here so I can you know see who it is who signed up I'll set that to send immediately and I'll include a response report if I like that will give me all of the details from the survey as well or I can just cut that out. Um, and that's it. I've finished editing that trigger. So there's my first one that's going to me when someone signs up. What about if we wanted to send them a copy of their response as well? So we'll add another trigger and this time instead of going to my email address, I'm going to use pipe text here. So I need to get their email address in pipe text form. Here we go. So I'll just put it down in the body of the, uh, the email here. So survey question email, what is your email address? And I can copy that and pop that up here instead. And that's where the email is going to go to. So on survey completion, I want to say, you know, this will be a thank you for signing up and here are your details. Thank you for signing up. 
for the XYZ conference. All right, dear, and then if you want to, you know, add in first name. All right, so dear first name, thank you for signing up for the, uh, uh, up to present at the uh, XYZ conference in 2021. Uh, we'll send you more details closer to the event. Um, but for now, here is a record of your submission. So you can either just include a full response report, which is all of the details um, that they entered into the survey, or we can do what we did before. So we can just do, you know, uh, name, surname, uni, email, and abstract. And just enter all the same things that we entered before. Um, so, you know, survey, question, first name, and what is their first name, and so on for surname. And of course, I could just copy this from the one above. Um, so here we go, but I'll just do these um, just so you can actually see them getting done. Uh, again, so survey question here for uni this time. Which uni do you come from? Uh, and of course, you know, you can make this form uh, for submission here a little more complex. You could have co-authors listed in here and email co-authors as well, if you had their contact details. Uh, so, you know, you can really go to town with these things. Um, so, you know, if you have any questions, please contact the conference committee at, uh, you know, I'll just put down my email address, but you know, you might have a standard um, uh, email address set up for the conference. Okay, kind of regards, Alex Russell, there we go. So I won't send the um, response report, but you can if you want to. And then I've got another one done there, okay? Now, I just wanna show you conditions here as well, because this might be kind of useful. So I'm gonna add another trigger, and it's going to be very similar to the one that we just did. I'm gonna put in their um, uh, email address that they've entered, but I'm gonna send it not when they, uh, complete the survey, but instead, let's say they've um, started the, uh, uh, let's say they've entered their email address so that we actually have their email address. Um, what is your email address? And that is not empty. So they've entered something into their email address, but they haven't entered an abstract yet. So that abstract is empty. So the conditions, there's two conditions on this. If they've entered an email address, because if they haven't entered an email address, then I can't email them, um, but they haven't entered an abstract. You could send them, um, you know, um, no abstract received for X, Y, Z conference. So we're gonna send them an email. Hi, um, and then include first name. Um, we see that you started, uh, submitting um, an abstract for XYZ conference, uh, but we have not received um, the abstract yet. Um, please try again if you still wish to present or contact us at, you know, uh, whatever the conference email um, is uh, for any help. All right, so it's just a way of saying, look, we see you're trying, but we didn't actually get it. And we just wanna make sure that there isn't a problem here that you might think that you've submitted it, but we didn't actually receive it. And we might not send this immediately. We might send this after a few days. So maybe, you know, a week later, um, just to make sure that, you know, they're not um, uh, like halfway through submitting uh, and they've gone and grabbed a cup of coffee and then they get this email just going, you haven't received your, your abstract yet. Um, send it after a few days. All right, so that's another type of trigger we can do, one with conditions on it here. And so you might think about other ways that you might use conditions uh, in terms of things like, you know, you only wanna email certain people from a survey. So you might use their answers to a particular question, say people who've agreed to take part um, in a subsequent interview or something along those lines. Um, so I'll save those triggers um, and that's how we do it, we're all set up. Now there's one more thing that I sort of want to make you aware of, which is the email address that this comes from. So by default, Qualtrics has their own email servers and it's at qemailserver.com or they've got a few others as well. And some participants 
you know, will think of those as spam or they might fall into junk email traps. At CQU, I've worked with our IT group to make sure that we can send emails from our own email addresses rather than from the Qualtrics email servers um, so that participants don't think they're suspicious because initially we were doing that and we got a few questions from participants going, is this a scam? <laughs> What's going on here? Uh, so if you're not at CQU, you might need to work with other people to make sure, uh, your, your IT people, to make sure that things are set up how you want them set up. Now to check, here's where you go. To get to your account settings, we go to the little person in the circle icon up here and click on that and we can get to account settings here. And if you scroll down, you'll find these user email defaults. So what is your default from email address? Uh, and that will usually be yours. But you know, again, if you've got a, a lab email address or a conference email address set up, then you might consider using that. Um, the default from name. So any emails will come from this person at this email. And what is the reply to email address as well? All right, so I'll set those. Um, and any email that gets sent out now will come from these details rather than from a random Qualtrics server. Uh, and that will keep people a lot happier and less worried about spam. All right, so I'm actually gonna complete the survey now and see what an email that has been set up by an email trigger looks like. So I'll set this up. My details are Alex Russell. I come from CQ University. Uh, then I'll go to the next page. I'll pop in my email address. And a.m.russell at cqu.edu.au. Um, all right, so that's all set up. And my abstract, so I'll just enter some stuff in here now. Um, you know, we've been doing lots of work on gambling research. Let us tell you how good we are. All right, that's my abstract. I'm gonna submit that now. My response has been recorded. You can always set up a nicer, you know, end of survey email than that as well. Uh, but um, what will happen now is an email will be triggered to me as the conference organizer and also me as the respondent um, to show that my surveys have been uh, submitted. Okay, and here are the emails that come through. Now, in this case, I've gone and done them to show you what the Q email server looks like rather than coming from my email address. Um, because I want you to see that, you know, this is potentially a bit impersonal or looks a bit spammy um, and a lot of people tend not to like this. Uh, so make sure you work with your uh, IT crew to set up um, all the emails that, uh, to make sure that they work. Uh, however, I just want you to see the details that have come through. Here's the one that goes to the conference organizer. This is someone signed up just so you've got a record. Um, and here are all the details that come through, including the abstract and everything. Um, and here's the one that goes to the participant, all of the fields that they've filled in um, as well. And you know, the details about contact us if you have any questions um, and names there as well. So that'll give you a sense of what you can do with email triggers uh, in Qualtrics. Again, make sure you have those settings set up to you know, use your uni email address as much as possible rather than a Qualtrics server. Uh, but hopefully you can see the benefit of these. So the conference example here is just an example because it's kind of a nice one where you might want to email yourself and uh, a respondent as well. But you can think about how you might use these. You could use these as thank you emails. Thank you for taking part in our survey. Um, if you would like to see further information, the report will be published here at this date or something along those lines. Or if you'd like to take part in more of our studies, please go to this website and sign up. Uh, you know, there's lots of ways that you can use email triggers here as well, just to, you know, keep in touch with people. So uh, please let me know if you have any further questions about it. But for now, that's it. I'll catch you in the next video. Thank you.